Hi, I'm Gary Elzerman. I've been a resident of Lake Orion, Oxford since 1971. Uh, for the past 18 years, I've been a full-time chainsaw carver. Today, we're gonna show you sort of the steps of actually how you begin doing something uh, in a chainsaw carving type of artwork. Um, basically, the way it works for me is that I do all commissioned work. That means that somebody's already come to me and said, hey, Gary, carve me a bear, an eagle. Uh, it could be whatever you really wanted. Uh, today, I'm doing a bear for a lady in Rochester. We're gonna show you the steps and the tools and how we actually get through from the beginning all the way to the end. So with that said, starting off, the most important part of chainsaw carvings is actually the chainsaw. Uh, I use three different, or actually four different uh, sizes, all the way from my large bar, steps down, that's a 36 inch bar. Then I go to a, tw uh, a 24 inch bar. This is a 16 inch bar. Basically, as I take the wood away, I get smaller with the chainsaws just for control. Um, I suggest that nobody just goes out and tries grabbing a chainsaw. You should know how to use a chainsaw, use the proper tools. Um, and then I finish everything up with my finish saw, which is basically a custom made saw for carvers. This is a dime tip bar. It's re-clutched and it's a special chain. All of my detail is done with the smaller saw. So uh, we'll go through all the steps. The next thing you need to do is, is the piece of wood. A lot of times I'll actually go to somebody's house that has a tree already existing in their yard. Uh, today we're not doing that, we're at the studio. At my studio I try to use mainly white pine. White pine has its own ability to fight off the sun, where hardwoods really don't do that. Uh, I do use some black walnut here, but generally it's almost all pine. The other thing is that pine is a stringy wood, which means that no matter what you do in chainsaw carvings, they're all going to have some type of checking and cracking. Uh, the moisture leaves the tree and naturally it cracks. So that's most of the time when you start to cut into a tree, you're relieving pressure, which helps without it cracking uh, large, uh, but you will get some type of cracks in, in all chainsaw carvings. Like I said, I use the pine not only because of the UV protection, but I also use it because it's light. Uh, a piece like this right here set up today um, this piece probably weighs about 125 pounds. If that was oak, it'd actually weigh about 400 pounds. Oak's generally about four times more dense than pine. The next thing that we do is, since we have already know that we're going to carve a bear, uh, a lot of my ideas, I don't just draw anything. I automatically see what's in the wood. And because I make my living this way, uh, the quicker that I can get to my lines, uh, the faster the carving will be and the better. A lot of people always say, well, why don't you hire somebody to rough cut the wood? Actually, the rough cuts are the most important. Uh, without the lines and the proportion of a, of a carving or a sculpture, then nothing will really look like it's supposed to look. I do a thing that's called a lot of plunge cutting, which you're going to see. Uh, like I said, it's all about getting to my lines as fast as I can. So we'll start the saw up here and begin the bear. So now you've seen that basically we've got the rough cut of the bear, which happens pretty quick if you know how to make your line. Once the, uh, the shape is there, which is the most important, then it's basically coming down from taking it right to uh, getting the next part, which is the smaller, the, the smaller uh, saw that creates, will create the arms, we begin to create the, the bear's head and some other the features of the bear with a small saw. So uh, that'll start next and we'll get that going.
is ready to go to his new home. I hope you enjoyed it. Good luck carving.